What's up guys, Dreamcast Guy here, talking today about Sifroth and asking the really hard question, was he really evil? Now to answer this question, we need to look at Sifroth's past. It's hard to really judge a man's crimes unless you know the place he's come from. So let's delve into the history of Sifroth. 27 years ago, Sifroth is born. Taken from Lucrezia before she could even hold him, he's handed off to Shinra scientists. He is merged perfectly in the womb with the Genova cells, so they want to train him to see how much of a weapon they can make and what will happen with ancient cells in a modern day warrior. In his early teens, he's enlisted in the military and joins the Wutai War. The Wutai War is brutal. It is a slaughter. This is the last bastion against Shinra Power Company. Every other town has bent a knee to the power company except for Wu Tai. They dispense their latest and greatest weapon, a teenager with a really long sword. Sifroth's strength is unrivaled, his speed impossible, his skin nearly bulletproof. He takes out thousands of people during the Wu Tai War, most of who are civilians. These are people who simply stood against the power company and had to be cut down to make an example of. Those who even survived the war are just hollow husks. People who have submitted to obeying a power company instead of a government. Their town turned into a tourist attraction. After the Wu Tai War, Sifroth remains in the military. This is a part of his life that I really wish we could see more of. I mean, Think about Sifroth as a man. You are a child who has super strength and no understanding of it. You're trained by scientists who never once patted your head or said good job. You are just a man who's been raised in labs and taught to kill. And once you do start to kill, you realize you have a real talent for it. Killing thousands, you've even made a name for yourself. You're a celebrity war hero at this point. And now, the war is over. What do you do? Well... Continue hunting down the foes of Shinra. Keep being a poster boy. Keep doing what you do best. End life. In a chilly September, Sifroth departs for what will be his final mission, Nibelheim. An outbreak of monsters has happened near the Maker Reactor, and he's dispatched to find out the source and stem it if possible. Assigned with him is a young first-class soldier named Zack and two soldiers, one of who is Cloud Strife. Climbing the mountain and entering the Mako Reactor, Sifroth discovers that in fact the chamber is filled with pods, each one with a different horrifically mutated human being, mutated and twisted by the effects of Mako. And in the main chamber, a single tall pod, labeled Genova. His mother was named Genova. That's one of the few things Hojo told him. He does not take the news well. Zack suggests a connection between the soldiers in the tank and the soldiers of Shinra. What if they're the same? What if the Mako showers they're all given to increase their strength make them no better than the beasts in this tank, who've lost all will and sentience, becoming nothing more than monsters to terrorize the nearby town? This thought enrages Sifroth to no end. The very thought that he could have come from one of these tanks. Sifroth, the great warrior, the man who's done everything just to try and find a purpose. What if he's just a weapon, born in a tank, for no point other than to destroy. Enraged, Sifroth returns to the manor in Nibelheim, Shinra Manor, whose basement was used for research for decades, holds the records and answers he needs. Staying up for 72 hours straight, Sifroth reads and reads and reads and discovers the horrific truth. He's just an experiment. An experiment that's gone very right or very wrong, depending on if you ask his allies or his victims. It is now October 1st, nine days since Sifroth came to the town. He's ready to enact his revenge. Setting the town ablaze in his cold fury, he begins his long trek up to the Maker Reactor to free his mother to find his answers. Chasing him up the mountain is Tifa's father, Tifa, Zack, and Cloud. Tifa's father stands against him and is cut down easily. Tifa, enraged, removes Sifroth's impaled sword from her father's corpse and chases after him, ready to seek any mad vengeance she's able to attain. Sifroth's insane strength easily disarms her, cuts her down, 
down and casts her aside. Now it's Zack's turn. Zack confronts him and is also easily tossed completely out of the chamber. Cloud, entering last of all, picks up Zack's sword, runs to the chamber, and before Sephiroth can react, impales him from behind. Cloud, believing the battle won, leaves to check on Tifa, and on the way out, Sephiroth emerges carrying Genova's head, which he's cut off. Sifiroth, in one last bid for strength, impales Cloud with his long sword, lifting him from the ground. Cloud overwhelms his power, though, with an even greater strength, lifts Sifiroth from the ground, and throws him into the reactor below. As we see Sifiroth disappearing into the horrible evil glow, we still see Genova's head clutched in his hand. Now, what many people don't realize is actually the majority of the time in Final Fantasy VII that you're fighting Sifiroth, you're not not actually fighting Sifroth. You're fighting Genova. Throughout the game, you're actually chasing Genova. Genova, the Calamity from the Skies, one of her primary abilities was shape-shifting. At the start of the game, you see a large chamber in Shinra headquarters, a dome building with Genova's corpse inside, headless, but still mostly whole. Later, when we come back here, we can see a trail of blood leading away from it, and the chamber has been burst open from the inside. This was Genova taking Sifroth's form, ready to commit the ultimate act, genocide of a global scale. Genova's going to harness the power of life stream, summon Meteor, and take the planet by storm to create herself into a godlike form, to achieve what no other person could, to cast the earth into a horrible evil blackness, to take all life, turn it into a weapon, as Sifroth always did. Sifroth, a man who could turn things only into weapons and never into good. This is why whenever you're fighting Sifroth throughout the game, you'll see him, you'll track him somewhere, and then all of a sudden, Sifroth will just throw something at you and you fight Genova. Because Sifroth is in Northern Crater. He's been dead for years. The hunt for Genova is what's truly going on here. So this is my thought in a nutshell and why I believe that I cannot truly blame Sifroth for his actions. He's a war hero with post-traumatic stress. Stress disorder. A man given a giant sword and told to kill and kill and kill, chopping children apart, chopping men apart, chopping entire houses apart. If that's what Shinra needs, that's what Shinra gets. The Wutai War was brutal beyond measure, but for the first time, at least he had a goal. Sifroth was nothing before this. He lived in labs. He never had a childhood. So to suddenly be thrust into the clothes of a man with the missions of a soldier, he adapted. He grew. He did what children do. They adapt. They grow. They look for approval. And approval he found. The mission in Nibelheim is what truly broke him. It finally destroyed him. What little tiny strands of meaning he had managed to find in this life were ripped from his hands. He wasn't truly this talented person. He was just a monster created in a tank to further the goals of a company that just wants to spread energy across the world and kill anybody who gets in their way. Being awake 72 hours reading those notes, his eyes must have been blurry, his mind clouded. Being awake that long, you're actually legally insane in the United States. So, he did what any insane person does. He reacted erratically. He burns the town to the ground, goes up, kills Tifa's father, and is tossed out of the Mako, carrying his mother's head, or what he believes to be his mother's head. He just wants to destroy, but I can't fault you. Sephiroth, at the end of the day, I pity your insanity. You merged so completely with Genova that I'm sure where Genova ends and Sephiroth begins is a blurry line. And you, you have fallen the greatest fall of all. I do like to think, what if you hadn't had this happen, Sephiroth? What if you'd just been a child? True, you would have been raised up at Icicle Inn. You would have had an evil scientist for a father. But you would have had a father, and you would have had a childhood. So, Sephiroth, I salute what you did right. And I condemn what you did wrong. But at the end of the day, everything is shades of gray. This has been Dreamcast Guy. If you like this video, share it somewhere. And also, subscribe. I'm almost 5,000 subscribers. When I get to 5,000 subscribers, I'm going to be giving away an Xbox One or a PlayStation 4. Thanks so much for watching. If you like this video, maybe check out my last video. Please subscribe, and if you want, share this somewhere with your friends.